Welcome, everyone, to Color Commentary. We are your popper commentators, Michael Pechik and Adrian Guarzalez. How's it going, Adrian? <coughs> I'm sick. Are you actually sick? No, that was just the bit. <laughs> um, so, good to hear that you're not actually sick. Let's uh, let's I'm move actually, in. I'm actually quite quite well. Yeah. Is is the weather better here there than here? Because uh, today has been fifty and rain. Uh, today bright, sunny, perfect day. I squandered yeah. it inside. I'm also not dreadfully surprised. Um, <laughs> okay, so let's get right into the upkeep because we've got kind of a big announcement. Um, I don't know how many of our listeners are aware of Original Magic Art. Um, it's a website. Oh, my. Let, let me handle this. Okay. How would you like a <laughs> premiere collection of tokens? All right, you go ahead now. Okay. So Original Magic Art is a website that's devoted to the collection of original pieces of art used in Magic the Gathering. They're also probably better known for the classic token collection, which takes pieces of classic art and pairs them up as magic tokens. And they are gorgeous. And I absolutely love them. And we are now an affiliate for OMA. And what this means is you're going to get a little bit of a uh, little bit of copy every show where, you know, we talk about them and, you know, invite you to go and uh, check out their products, which are really stellar. I went to art school for five years and I'm a huge nerd for art history. They've got some super, super cool stuff. Um, and they, at this point, probably make tokens for every single possible token you could generate, even ones that don't exist in actual physical form. Like, um, I believe that they actually have a, a Stang Twin token, which, you oh, know... Oh, nice. There's not a, they actually never made a Stang, a Stang Twin token? I mean, that makes sense. That's such an old card. It, it's an old card. No one really plays it. It's never had, you know, occasion for a reprint. But these Mike. are really... What? Uh, oh, never mind. Keep going. I just, I just have a bit I want to do before you get to the part here at the bottom. Okay. So, you know, we're going to shill for them just a little bit. Um, so what you can do is you can go to their website, and if you place an order and you use the coupon code COMMENTARY, spelled exactly the way it is in our name, C-O-M-M-O-N-T-A-R-Y, you'll get 5% off and we get a little kickback because that way they know it was us who got you into buying this. Um, and real quickly, I do want to mention they have a collection of tokens just for popper. Um, I've got the list here in front of me. Um, you get, you get your one, one birds, you get clues, you get an elephant, you get elf warriors, um, elder horrors, elder scions and elder spawns which of course is to dodge copyright claim. Um, a germ token, four goblins, a couple of golems, halfling soldiers instead of kithkin, uh, humans, plants, slivers, spirits, soldiers, and a single solitary zombie. Um, but really do go ahead and check them out. You can also get play mats from them. Um, and they also are coming out very soon with a hymned Torok playmat featuring the official art that was used most recently in Eternal Masters. Um, they have been printing and promoting a series of playmats featuring magic art from artists that are officially licensed. What was the bit you wanted to do, Adrian? Uh, you're already way past it. Don't worry about ah, it. Okay. But you, you said it. Really, really check out OMA. They're awesome people you know out of the blue they just kind of came to us and we're like do you want to be an affiliate and i was like yes i do i really like Dude, the they, product they the him the torok from ema is the from the vault one also that's actually probably the best start the old ones are not that great i will fight you <laughs> oh i'm sorry do you like old man flashing people or do you like uh wolf howl wait, wait which one is old man flashing people it's the one with the guy and he's like lifting up his robe and there's like a flash of light under it. It's oh, the one that's mean, on Moto. You mean objectively the best one. That's the it's the worst one. Though the worst one the worst one for me is it's not that one. Uh, I don't one mind is, the circle is, one. Is people playing oh. like chess or like arguing over a table? That is the worst that, one. 
Yeah, that was the worst one. Also, the I best don't one like the original through, for me is the wolf one. Oh god, I like the wolf one. It looks like a Walmart no. shirt. I have to tell you this this the bit later, and then I'm going to do it next time we we do the shill because I I asked very politely, Mike, and you just blitzed on right past it. I'm sorry, I get excited about art nerd <laughs> stuff. Um, no, I understand. This is exactly your wheelhouse. So I'm very happy for you. Yeah, um, definitely check them out. Remember to use our promo code co- commentary. It helps us out. It gets you a little slight discount on an already awesome product. Um, yeah. Um, anything else in the upkeep? Uh, you, pl- you play any good magic lately, Adrian? No, but I do plan on making some sweet videos because we got a lot of cool decks from the most recent uh, Popper Challenge. Actually, do we want to do want to touch on that challenge and uh, yeah, we the should. Results I don't know if we have yet. Uh, the most interesting deck for me was Boros Monarch, which I really love that evolving of a deck. You basically play the uh, four uh, Palace Sentinels instead of the Koldotha Rebirth, Rally the Peasants plan. And I played it earlier on Moto, like in, just for fun. I played against UR Puzzle. And, and it, that's great. You know, you're, we're seeing like two, uh, you know, two very relatively new decks to the scene getting played. So that's really cool when you see like how the format's evolving. Because when we first started this show, people said we were going to run out of stuff to talk about because there's just not enough movement in the format. And that's just patently false. Um, but yeah, uh, he took Monarch from me and then decked himself. It was sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, yeah, so so the, the, the most interesting thing was there was a lot more Blue-Red Delver in the top 32 than there is in the usual five O's, which I think kind of confirms some of my suspicions about some decks looking a little bit better because of the format of leagues versus a long multi-round format. And way less stompy than you would have thought. Yup. I, I don't have the numbers up in front of me here, but like, it was not a good showing for the deck that has been number one for months at this point. Yeah, so. dude, it's it was very interesting. Uh, there were a lot of sweet other decks that showed up. Um, you know, the the I did build that black white pestilence uh, again, like Orzov Monarch. I think is what Alex ended up calling. I ended up building that list as well. That deck is fun. Um, I don't know how good it is, but Monarch is a powerful mechanic and it's here to stay. Yeah, we might we might have to revisit that uh that that white black monarch pestilence deck at some point because it's just it was just too out there to kind of ignore. Um Yeah, and it got top eight. Yeah, it did. It did. It did pretty well. Um yeah, so we're gonna get another set of results from that the shortly after this episode actually releases to the public. Um and, and, and to we'll be talk honest, Mike, I, I wouldn't yeah, that's what I was going to say. It wouldn't surprise me if that becomes a recurring segment on the show talking about the results from the most recent uh, tournament. Yeah, uh, I, I really like this decision. I think it's nothing but positive for the format. And, you know, I don't know if you took a look at the prizes, but if you do well on one of these things, it's pretty darn good in terms of payout. Um, yeah. Uh, the only other magic related stuff I... Oh, oh, we talked about this slightly in the pre-show. Um, a Hearthstone player got an invite to the pro tour despite not having qualified for it and people on twitter are upset about it uh i didn't it's a maz um who if you don't know has been a hearthstone streamer for a while um very prolific streamer very big in the hearthstone community did not know he played magic does he play magic mike i believe from context that i got on some of the tweets he does play magic but as with you know for example, Brian Kibler realized that Hearthstone was a much more easy way to get financial success out of his hobby. Um, uh, and why did they invite him to the Pro Tour? What, I've, I don't keep abreast of Twitter like you do. What was the reasoning behind this? Um, it was... I, I didn't actually read the statement, but the general gist of things is they are inviting him as a promotional stunt, basically, to, in the hopes that he will draw part of his fan base to watch the Pro Tour. And in turn, those people will possibly become enfranchised magic players given time. Um, now, is, I mean, should we go into a discussion about this? Is that fair? Do you not want to talk about it? I look, I don't have a dog in this race. I watch the Pro Tour sometimes. I check it out when I'm interested and it doesn't look too bad in terms of like standard being boring. 
like I don't really have a dog in this race. I think it's an interesting tactic they're trying as someone who works in a marketing firm. <laughs> I don't I don't see this edit working out well, but I think All I'm right, gonna leave fair. it at that. I don't I don't want to place a value judgment on wizards for their decision. No, no, I I, I agree. I just was you know, I, I, I think I agree with you. Ultimately it is wizards' decision. They are the ones who award uh invites and I don't see a reason you know, we already have, isn't there already like a community invite where someone who doesn't necessarily qualify is still like a fan favorite and gets an invite. So I don't, I don't see why PR stunt invite can't be a thing. I don't know if they still do the community invite. I know that at one point at various points, they have invited people kind of as promotional things, but I don't know. I understand both sides being frustrated with this, but I don't know. It's their, it's their company, their decision. I think they're well within their rights. All right, and you're That's right. Set. It's not our fight. Let's get That's to the show. Yeah, we're, we're we're almost at ten minutes here. Let's get into it. So, we started our Patreon a while ago, um, and one of the tiers was you get to pick out what we talk about for an episode. And while well, we certainly did just spend ten minutes talking about random junk, my kind of show. We, I know. I know. We. we we, 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 we can't really just ignore things that are happening in the community at large. But our kind patron, David, who has supported us at our highest tier for over a month now, we got in contact with him, and he said, you know, I just want a Tordex um, episode. And we said, sure. Um, Mike said, here's your money back, David. <laughs> Well, it's it's one of those things. I, I was preparing, you know, a little bit where I was like, someone decided to donate more money than I ever thought someone would consider my time worth. But apparently, hey, David has supported us for a long time. Thank you so much, David. We're happy to yes. do your list. Let's, yes, let's Not, do it. Well before, well before the Patreon. Okay, yeah. So let's start off with some basics. We I use the word Tordex, and that's not super descriptive. The pro- Tordex is an abbreviation for Tortured Existence, which is an enchantment from Stronghold. Tortured Existence costs one black, and it has the ability black, discard a creature card from your hand, return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Um, And this is... <laughs> I know you hate a when I do these. Block. It's the building block. This is the... Is this just like the worst recurring nightmare possible? Uh, I don't know, Mike. Do we have another one in the format? I mean, we've we've got Grim Harvest, which is right, kind of. Sure. <laughs> um, Tordex is uh, is it the worst? No, I do not think it's it's the worst. Tordex has a lot of interesting play to it because it costs B to activate, so you can activate it you know, basically as long as you have black mana up, and I think that makes it much different from a card like. Um, recurring nightmare which does cost three don't forget even though it is certainly the best out of all of them or even grim harvest which is a uh, five mana for the full effect and something has to die that 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 is fair um this does kind of have you know the lowest relative cost the most repeatability and definitely kind of the the lowest price of entry if you will um but so okay so we're basing a deck around tortured existence what do we want we want things we want to always have creatures in our hand and we want to use our graveyard kind of as a toolbox where we can kind of you know pick and choose because we are a format that has dredge in it (laughs) unfortunately or fortunately depending on how you want to look at it is is this list the list that david submitted to us this is the list that david submitted to us it's the one that he's currently playing um and i figured this was a good point to sort of get into our discussion um and I'm going to start off with our creatures here. So first up, we've got Sanitarium Skeleton, which was a nifty little pickup from Shadows Over Innistrad. It's black for a 1-1. One, one. It has the ability two and a black, return Sanitarium Skeleton from its graveyard to its owner's hand. Um, so once you mill this thing, you kind of permanently have something to pitch to Tortured Existence shy of some graveyard hate. What are you? What, what are your thoughts on this thing? Sanitarium skeleton. Uh, it's cool because you can keep dumping it into the graveyard. Yeah, and and you, uh, which is real, which is really its point. Is it's? I mean, it's a blocker that then fuels your uh, your your other stuff, right? Because you, 
Yeah, I mean, you, you can play it as a blocker if you want, but really it's cool because it goes straight from the graveyard to your hand. Yeah, I mean... Without having to discard something else. Like the 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 alternate mode of not being Tordex fodder and instead just being a recursive chump blocker for something that you just need to keep at bay is not the worst. And, and I will say that Tordex has... I see a lot of new cards on this list, so I think Tordex has maybe gotten a little bit better. Uh, next up, we've um, got three copies of Spore Frog, which is green for one one sacrifice Spore Frog, prevent all combat dam- prevent all combat damage that would be dealt until the end of turn. So it is fog with legs. Um, yeah, and and uh, the fog frog, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can bring back over and over and over. Actually, one of my favorite pieces of art in Magic. I I really love the the composition on it. Um, but. This kind of creates a a sort of soft lock that a lot of the Tordex decks seem to enjoy running. Um, personally, not a huge fan of it. Um, I feel it's a little easily disruptible, but there are definitely decks that struggle to kind of <laughs> have a way out of this soft lock. Right. Well, like, how does Stompy beat this? Um applying pressure and hoping that they draw into a uh well i meant meant, how does okay fair i was gonna say how does stompy beat this with the tordex and the spore are already going but yeah i guess uh, gleeful so that's post board though game one that's gonna be tough yeah game one this is definitely tough and this is definitely you know tech we used to see in the sideboard now kind of moved into the main board because oh my goodness you're going to play stompy um Ooh boy aggro next next uh next card two copies of satyr wayfinder one in a green one one when it enters the battlefield you reveal the top four cards of your library you may put a land card from among them into your hand put the rest into your graveyard and this kind of represents the uh the sort of shallow search effects that we've been seeing more and more in green and i really like these Yeah, um, it does what you want it to do. It dumps stuff into your graveyard and lets you select something you might need. So I don't think it's bad at all. And it's a recurrable creature. Yep. Although you don't want to recur this one too much because this guy's gonna gonna start decking you out pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, next up, we've got two copies of Crypt Rats. Two and a black for a 1-1. One, one. X, Crypt Rats deals X damage to each creature and each player. Spend only black mana on X. Um this is our our wrath of god um when you can recur it you can also use it as a repeatable mini fireball um just pretty solid i think we've talked about crypt rats a few times before on the show uh it's a good it's a good card but not easily replicated the other thing that does this pestilence or like martyr of ash or something and they're not as good yeah uh, i'd argue martyr of ash is a very very different beast but that said Crypt Rat's probably the best version of this effect. Crypt right. Rat's is basically, uh, basically Ancestral Recall, if you think about it. <laughs> That's one of my favorite magic tricks. I'm, I'm not going to pick that one apart, but uh, instead I'm going to move on. We got three copies of Golgari Brown Scale, which is one green green for a 2-3. Um, and when it's put into your hand from your graveyard, you gain two life, and then it has Dredge 2. So... Dredge is a replacement mechanic. It's always templated as dredge number. And what that means is whenever you would draw a card, if you have something with dredge in your graveyard, instead you can take that number, the number of cards, the dredge number, in this case two, from the top of your library, put them into your graveyard, and return this to your hand. Um, and this is this is an example of like popper synergy at its finest in that these two cards were printed probably about five to 10 years apart from one another. And they actually, uh, Golgari Brown scale interacts with Tordex just fine. That's a good, good, good little combo. A lot of decks, Tordex decks that aren't necessarily uh, black and green, you know, maybe they're Esper colored or something. Uh, some of them also play Golgari Brown scale just so they have something to discard to Tordex all the time. Yeah, um, and also Dredge 2 isn't going to mill you out in a huge hurry, um, and the 2 life is relevant. Uh, next, we've got, you know, the the far more eternal playable Dredge card. Um, 2 in a black is going to get you Stinkweed Imp. It's a 1-2 with flying, and 
Whenever Stinkweed Imp deals combat damage to a creature, destroy that creature with Dredge 5 stapled onto it. And, oh man, it's a this, this it's a digs. It's a goodie. Yeah. Um, just the fact that it's an evasive blocker that has pseudo death touch oh man this thing you know it eats a thing and then you're milling yourself for five and if you have an active tordex that's that is just drawing five cards kind of um this is a staple in these sorts of decks anything else about stinkweed imp that we should know uh the second art is better oh god just <laughs> unrelenting opinions i have them all right the next one is a little uh little interesting number uh tilling tree folk two and a green for one three tree folk druid when tilling tree folk comes into play you may return up to two target land cards from your graveyard to your hand so with all this milling sometimes you want to be able to recur some of the stuff that you've milled away that you kind of actually wanted right and you know, you, you want to hit your land drops into this deck. Those are more Tordax or Crypt Rats activation. So black mana is pretty important. Yeah. Um, next up, we've got Grave Scrabbler. It is a 2-2 two, two for three and a black. And that seems pretty terrible. Um, but it does have madness for one and a black. If you discard this card, it goes into exile temporarily and you can cast it. Um, if not, it goes to your graveyard. But it says, when Grave Scrabbler comes into play, if its madness cost was paid, you may return target creature in a graveyard to its owner's hand. Um, Great Scrabbler is a neat little interaction with Tordex where if you pitch it to Tordex, you functionally get back two things instead of one, and you're left with a 2-2 two -two that will chump and then hopefully do the same thing again. Yeah. And it's it's a, it's a cool little riff on Gravedigger. That said, this is this is one that I've always sort of felt was a bit of a trap for Tordex, just because without Tordex, this is just bad. Yeah, um, it's, it's pretty gar it's pretty garbage. But that could be said for a lot of, of Tordex as a whole. Is the deck really only ticks when you have a uh, Tordex on the table? Yeah, um, and we'll get more into this in the discussion segment, but uh, there there are some different theories behind this. Next up, we've got Thorn of the Black Rose, three and a black for a one three with death touch. When it enters the battlefield, you become the monarch. And for those unaware, being the monarch is a status. Um, if anyone hits you, they become the monarch. And if at the end of beginning of your end step, you are the monarch, you draw a card. Um, so the card advantage on this thing is actually pretty real, as, as you discussed it's earlier. My, it's one of my favorite new mechanics. I think it's it's very unique and very cool. Yeah, um, it's kind of interesting to see something that was originally designed for multiplayer turn into a real powerhouse in two-player, which is kind of a recurring trend at this point since, you know, we've had famous goof-ups such as True Name Nemesis. That card's um, really good. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's not be it's not unbeatable though. It's not unbeatable. That that is a hundred percent true. It's just very, very pushed by nature of it being pretty whatever when it comes to multiplayer. Um next up we've got Arrogant Worm, which is three green green for a four four trample, but it has madness two and a green. Um what are your thoughts on this? um it's okay uh generally i mean it's a big dude generally you see it more in like the madness style decks uh where you're trying to combine it with like wild mongrel or something not necessarily tordex uh it's a beater but it's not the biggest beater in the format and it, it doesn't square too well against affinity cards so i think it's 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 fine but i i think I, the reason i like tordex is to play a bunch of utility creatures not necessarily an under costed four four that that that's pretty fair especially because there are decks that you know like affinity play under costed four fours a little bit more efficiently um now it is pretty good against uh i don't know is it even really that good against blue red delver because they have scred um, I would argue no for that exact reason. Uh, Scred gets pretty large pretty quickly. Um, I imagine, so, you know, your only big discard outlet in this deck that I'm seeing is 
Tordex. So it means you're not doing this before turn four. And as a result, your opponent is going to have likely four lands and they're probably going to be able to scred it. So I'm not a big fan of that one. Um, I tell you what I am a big fan of in this list and I am so happy to see it here. Horror of the Broken Lands. Um, this that is an Omnicat. That is super good. Ooh. Ooh. Love it. Love the art. Love everything about this. Okay, so four and a black gets you a four, four, which isn't great. But it does say whenever you cycle or discard another card, Horror of the Broken Lands gets plus two, plus one until end of turn. And it itself has cycling black. Um, I played one of these at the Omnicat pre-release. It felt very strong in limited where I didn't have that many cyclers. This thing is absurd in this deck, I imagine. Like, yeah, it, you, it almost makes me go, go ahead, ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say it makes me wish that and we'll get to this, I guess, in a little bit. But we we don't have uh, the black fling. Um, right of consumption. Evading. Yeah, yeah, that card would be good with that card. Uh, right, as it is, it's a, it's a good, great beat stick, but it, and yeah, it's just it's going to get so big that your opponents aren't going to be able to do a lot, but unfortunately, it doesn't, necessar- it doesn't have Trample by itself, and I feel like the Fling card would be great in this deck. It doesn't have Trample. That said, you know, in the grindier games, the threat of activation is very real, um, and a lot of those grindier matchups, you're not necessarily going up against other 4-4s. Four um, That's true. That said, this thing, this thing can't even trade up against something as large as, say, an Ulamog's Crusher if you've just got a couple of, uh, couple of black mana open and a creature well, and in hand one of the reasons, Tordex. It's, one of the reasons it's also so good is you can cycle it early and then just get it back later with Tordex. Yeah, um, that, is, that is not to be understated. Um, next, we've, got a, we've got, a, got a component of probably one of the better-known draft archetypes of all time, Gnaw to the Bone. Three and a green. You gain two life for each creature card in your graveyard and flashback two and a green. Um, this supported the green-black spider spawning deck and is real obnoxious. Um, yeah, it is. This usually represents a frankly absurd amount of life and there's nothing quite as satisfying as this getting stuck in your opponent's hand when you have something like Nihil spell bomb. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's a strong, it's, it's a good card and you can, and it, like you said, it's counterable, but it's a good yeah. card. Yeah. Um, and definitely helps keep a slightly, sometimes slower deck alive a little bit longer because, you know, stinky dimp fills up the graveyard very quickly and just having not of the bone as a way to kind of keep yourself afloat if need be is Nice backup. Also, the fact right. that it is flashback means you can mill it as well. Because it's not like the, the black version of that card. Like, you get to keep the cards with Knot of the Bone. With the, the other one, it exiles the creatures, and then you gain the life, right? Crypt Incursion, yes. Okay, but this one you get to keep the creatures, so it's it's better for you. Yes, I believe Knot of the Bone is specifically, like, it's a strictly better version of some card from, like, I want to say Mirage Block, that is the same thing minus flashback and it only gains you one life for each of them. Interesting. Um, next we've got a, got a kind of interesting one drop in Rafelos's gift, which is green sorcery reveal any number of green cards in your hand, return an enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand for each card revealed this way. Thoughts. Uh, let, uh, let me. I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I I have to, I need to pull the card up. Well, well, so so uh, so so you know, you, you this helps get you back your tortured existences and. Uh, I guess if you mill them, you self mill them, then it's much better. Also, because self milling Tordex does not feel great. Yeah, so I've seen Rafelos' gift in Tordex lists, and it's usually a sideboard card. Um, I don't know how I feel about this in the main deck. I don't know how I feel about three of them in the main deck. Yeah, that's definitely definitely a bit of a push for me. Although, looking through, this is definitely a very self-mill-heavy deck. 
Um, as opposed to, for example, we've seen one splashing red where some of the discard comes in the form of faithless looting and things like that. Right. A little bit more controlled. Yeah. Um, then actually let's, uh, let's talk about two riffs on a similar card. So we have one copy commune with the gods, one copy benefaction of Ronus. Um, so commune of the gods is one in a green reveal top five cards, of your library, put a creature or enchantment from among them into your hand. The rest go to the graveyard. Benefaction of Ronus is two in a green. You still reveal the top five, but you may put a creature card and or an enchantment card from among them into your hand. Put the rest to your graveyard. Which of these is better here? I don't know. They're so similar. <laughs> Which one do you think is better? Um... I th- I'm inclined to point towards commune with the gods and that's strictly because a lot of time I feel like there's a decent chance with this list that when you cast benefaction of Ronus, you're just paying one more for a commune with the gods. Yeah, um, but the upside is that you get two things, right? Th- like that's totally Tordex true. And a Tordex, some Tordex bait. Um, and I, I, I think that's the argument for it. Um, God, yeah, it's 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 really tough. Um I could I could run it through a hypergeometric calculator, but there's a lot of factors here. Um, especially since, you know, you could have you could go commune of the gods into benefaction of Ronas, which severely thins your deck. But, you know, I'm I'm of the opinion where I would rather be running two copies commune of the gods just because I would rather play something that is consistently good at X rate as opposed to is sometimes good at X rate and sometimes good at Y rate and Y rate is not a hundred percent of the time. All right. That's fair. Personal take. Um, in terms of enchantments that you can get with these two, we've got, of course, four copies of Tortured Existence. Then we got four copies of Deadweight, which is black for an enchantment aura, enchant creature, enchant creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. Um, and then we've got three copies of Vessel of Nascency, green for an enchantment, gr- one in green, sacrifice Vessel of Nascency, reveal the top four cards of your library. You may put an artifact, creature, enchantment, land, or planeswalker from among them into your hand, put the rest into the graveyard. So, yeah. That's a great turn one, turn one play. That's probably one of the best turn one plays for this deck other than Tordex itself. And, you know, there's a lot of enchantments. So, actually, Rofellos Gift doesn't actually seem that bad to me anymore because you can also get back your Vessel of Nazencies. So, and, you're de- and you have four dead weights. So, like, I don't know. We you, you have 11 enchantments to work with here. That's not terrible, actually. Yeah. Um, I just personally for me, the upside of recurring dead weight in a format where sometimes turn two is a couple of two twos into another two two. It feels like it might be a l- I guess Rafelos's gift is a one drop, but I don't know. Personally, it feels still a little out of place. Um, All right. That's fair. In terms of lands here, uh, four copies of Ash Barons, two copies of Bajukabog, three copies of Evolving Wilds, uh, two copies of Fo- Forest, uh, two copies Golgari Rot Farm, four copies Jungle Hollow, four copies Swamp. Um, so how do you feel about decks that have more fetches than fetchable lands? That's par for the course in Legacy, isn't it? It is par for the course in Legacy. And in this case, it is barely, barely over. Um... I like it. I think I'm okay with it because the four of those are Ash Barons. Um, yeah, and Ash Barons is is great. Uh, very good in this deck. And you know what? I think, you know, it's worth saying it. Like, that's a reason Ash Barons is still a very good competitor as your fetch land of choice because in this deck, you know, if you've gotten those six basics either in the graveyard or in your hand, um an evolving wilds would just be dead there. Um, yeah. All right. Not much to unpack with the, uh, the land base, uh, in terms of sideboard cards, we've got some, Ooh, uh, where do we got to the box? 
Yeah. Um, so we've got Caustic Caterpillar first up, which is, um, as I learned recently after playing some of my first games at EDH in years, quite powerful when you can recur it. Um, it is green for a 1-1, one, one, and it has one in a green, sacrifice Caustic Caterpillar, destroy target artifact or enchantment. So... It's naturalize on layaway, but better because you can recur it. Yeah, dude, it's a creature, so it's it's better in this deck. Yeah, um, definitely a situational better, but seems seems good. This seems probably like the best artifact and enchantment hate this deck can pack because um, we are not a format that gets things like um, Reclamation Sage. Um, next, we got two copies of Fume Spitter. Black for a 1-1, one, one, sacrifice it, put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. Chump blocks for days, slowly shrinks your opponent's stuff. Just just good. I like it. Yep. Yep. We've got our fourth copy of Spore Frog. Um, two copies of Augur of Skulls, which is a card I like the design of, but I'm going to just say it I think is bad. Um, it's one in a black for a 1-1. One, one with one in a black regenerate auger of skulls, but then it says sacrifice auger of skulls target player discards two cards. Play this ability only during your upkeep. You know, this card seems bad like on its face. And I agree that the conditional activation is not cool, but if you're playing against a control deck or if you're playing, against, I don't know, two cards is a lot and it, it can actually be fairly strong if you're playing against like a non-interactive, or not, maybe it's not as interactive deck, or if you're playing against a deck that wants to go the long game, just ripping two cards from them every turn is going to eventually net you some some gain. I, I could see this being quite good against um, against Stompy um, if they don't have a very fast start. My experience with Augur of Skulls has generally been cast Augur of Skulls turn two, opponent's turn two, removal spell on Augur of Skulls. And maybe that it's, is... It's, I don't know. I think that's, but then they then they waste a removal spell on it. That's fair, but I feel in a deck like this where you're already recurring everything so much, them any any removal spell they point anywhere most of the time is going to be kind of wasted. Right. Um, okay, I can see that. I don't know. I I see what it's getting at, but I'm not a hundred percent on board with it, and that's also in part I will admit due to my biased nature as having had bad prior experiences with this card um moving on two more copies crypt rats um three copies of fairy macabre and i think that this is the only deck where i think this card is really good as graveyard hate um because you, you can recur it yeah it's one in a black for a two two flying which is functionally flavor text a lot of the time the thing you really care about is discard fairy macabre remove two cards up up to two cards in a graveyards from the game um it's sideboard it's it's a graveyard hate that you can recur very efficiently in this deck um it's really good here i feel that you know it's not as good other places but it certainly has a home in tordex absolutely um then we got another copy copy of stinkweed imp uh two copies not of the bone and then finally one copy of Battlefield Scrounger, which is three green green for a 3-3. Three, three. It has Threshold. Put three cards from your graveyard on the bottom of your library. Battlefield Scrounger gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. Play this ability only once each turn. This is an interesting tech. I'm pretty sure that this is in here for the long game because milling out is a very real chance. Battlefield Scrounger confirmed the card. Um, also, for what it's worth, it beats in as a 6-6. Six, six. Not terrible. No, not 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 terrible in the least. Um, all right. So, Torex. The, the, we, we've given our opinions on the list, you know, for David and, you know, no, no ill will, David. We both have opinions on on this deck and certain cards in it, but... I think, I think, you know, green black is a very traditional sort of form for Tordex to take. Um, what color combinations have you seen Tordex in? Mardu, Esper. I don't think I've ever seen Rakdos. I don't think I've or ever seen Cynic. just, yeah. Or not Seneca, Deemer. I've seen, 
I've seen and heard stories about Demir teachings or teachings. Jeez, tortured existence. It's been a long four day week. Um, but I think I think I've I've never seen pure like just mono black Tordex, but I've seen a lot of color combinations where sometimes I kind of kind of have to do a double take and think, is this actually a good idea? Um, it's definitely. I would say one of the more build around cards that we have in the format. Do you think that's fair? Uh, yeah, I think if you're playing it, you have to build your entire deck around it. So uh, yeah, a hundred percent. Um, it's a deck that you sort of have to do that with, right? Like if you just have, you can't just stick Tordex in any old list. Yeah. Um, and in fact, it's often quite bad in those sorts of lists. Um, I mean, it kind of, you know, if you're just jamming it in your deck that has black in it, it kind of kind of says to me, like, I've included some creatures in here that are not good, and I'm willing to discard them to get back my real threats. Well, um, yeah, there's just there's just so many decks where it's just to do nothing. Yeah, it, it kind of always strikes me as odd when I see it show up in a list and it's like, but there's there's no real synergy. You've you've just made a very, very bad Grim Harvest. Um because, you know, for the average deck, I feel Grim Harvest is better. I feel like once you start getting into Tordex and you start going, okay, well, you know, there's a list like the Mardu Tordex, which uh, friend of the show 8686 has piloted a couple 5-0s that is basically just a Mardu colored good stuff deck that happens to have Tordex. And when it has Tordex online, you know, you're recurring things like, I don't know, uh, Ponyback Brigade and getting a bunch of one ones onto the battlefield, or you know, you're you're making sure that you can stack your graveyard in a way that you you can recur that death spark every turn. Um, there's definitely a lot of options when it comes to Tordex, and I've always kind of found it interesting because it's always uh, what's that phrase? Always the bridesmaid, never the bride. It's kind of one of those situations. Yeah, and I, I think you hit on a, on, a, on a point there that I like where I think Tordex lists are at their best when they are good decks that include Tordex as sort of a value thing. And you can see that I think most prevalently in the uh, the uh, blue, the Esper, excuse me, the Esper Tordex list, which has synergy like, um, you know, that, that what's that enchantment, the white one where you get to recur the creature immediately? Uh, Angelic Renewal. Yeah, where you get that, and you know, our one of our local players, Jake, is the one who you know I think really helped popularize that list. And uh, being able to recur Moldrifter is also like insanely cool. Like that card is just so powerful, and you know you get so much value off of it basically because you're able to bring it back over and over again. Is what I'm saying making sense? I feel like I'm I'm rambling a little. Yeah, yeah. No, I I think we do need to make a point that you know we did just go from don't jam Tordex into anything to put Tordex in value lists. And I feel like there is, there is an active difference. You know, if say there was a mold drifter that did not have a Voke on it and you were playing that over mold drifter, Tordex gets a little bit worse because it doesn't let you do that thing where, you know, you evoke out a mold drifter and then get it back with Tordex. Um, we're very contrarian. We contradict ourselves constantly. Well, it's not even a contradiction. I think it's just refining, you know, putting, putting an edge on that point. Um, to kind of hammer home that, you know, you want to hit this sweet spot of synergy with tortured, tortured existence, but not dependence upon it. Um, Cause you know, there was a period, you know, back, back in ye old days when mono blue Delver reigned supreme um, where the Delver matchup for Tordex kind of boiled down to, do I have turn one Tordex? Because if not, they're just going to keep up a spell stutter sprite or a counter spell for ages. And then I'm not going to get to do all the cool things my deck wants to do. Like casting Golgari Brown scales does not feel great. No, not at all. Um, so I think, I think, you know, and I've definitely joked on this show before that, you know, tortured existence is a bad grim harvest. And, part of that is for a long time, you know, we were living in a very blue tinted world and, you know, having something that lets you grind really hard, but 
also is very resistant to counter spells was kind of a good thing. And I'd be interested to see. I think I think we actually got a Tordex list in a 5.0 not that long ago as I hastily type this into Google to make Google. sure that I'm not a crazy person. Everyone, look at me. I'm entertaining. Ah, da, da, da. Mike's Dude, doing stuff. Do the Adrian show bit. I, I didn't. I didn't catch it well, that hi, one time. Well, hi, kids. It's the Adrian show. I'm your host, Adrian. I oh, regret God. pretty much everything. <laughs> All right. I found it. Okay. Yeah, I, I just did too. Um, yeah. So so this was the 23rd. Today, date of recording is the 25th. Like less than two days ago, someone managed to uh, pilot a list to a 5.0. Um, and even just looking at this, like already I'm seeing like differences here, you know, for Commune of the Gods, Kroos and Tusker is a top end, um, leaning into more Grave Scrabblers, running Sakura Tribe Elder, running Ravenous Rats. Running um, Shambling Shell and Tweaking. Shambling Shell, I think, is super, super spicy. I love this card. Um, Tell us what it does, Mike. Uh, uh, my my eyes just did the thing where I can't see anything. Uh, uh, what, where is Mike? It? Uh, all right, it's one, a black, and a green for a three one, but that's not what's important. Um, it has sacrifice shambling shell, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. Again, uh, not that important. Really, it has dredge three, which is probably the coolest thing about it, but also it's just an aggressive card later in the game that lets you perpetually stack it and put plus one plus one counters on things. Yeah. Um, just being able to kind of like eke out that minimal value is what these sort of grindy graveyard based strategies are always have always kind of been about. Um, you know, I don't want to harp on this, but I had people over for commander this weekend and someone played Marin and Marin of clan Neltoth is very similar to this sort of strategy. That was easily the best commander they printed in that cycle. Uh, yeah, I, I, I play that in a legacy deck. That's, that's how good she is. Like she's absurd. Um, but Tortured Existence, you know, kind of has a similar thing going on where you get to exchange resources for resources in your graveyard. And I think that Vessel of Nascency makes the argument for a green inclusive Tortured Existence deck much stronger. Um, and I'm going to be honest here for a moment. I don't have enough experience with this deck to, you know, definitively say this is this is the 75 that you should be running if you want to run Tortured Existence. But I don't think black green is as bad as it used to be. Um, I definitely think that there was a period where the black green torched existence deck was not good, but was definitely the one that most people ran because it was common. Um, and then we kind of had the the Abzan version that ran Oromancer and got to run, you know, Lone Missionary and uh, Core Skyfisher sometimes, you know, per, get stuff back when it had ETB triggers. Um and I think that's what's kind of neat about Tordex, even though I haven't put in time with it. It just seems like you can do whatever you want with it. Right, which is, I think, why it's so appealing to so many people, uh, especially the brewing crowd who are looking for the next hotness, because uh, it's a very good shell, and it's just like, I'm just going to stick a bunch of creatures in here and see what happens. Yeah, you can... Like, like obviously, you can't put anything with it, but it just kind of invites you to say, okay, well... We've got these cool graveyard effects. Maybe there's a deck here. Um, I do. I, I am looking through this other list that uh, that recently five owed, and uh, I'm seeing Gurmag Angler, and I have always firmly disagreed with that card in this list. What are your, yeah, what are your thoughts? It, it. It. I mean, the, the, what I'm trying to say. There's a lot of stuff you can get rid of without worrying about it, but when you do that, you're like, especially in David's list here. You're not able to leverage Rofellos' gift. You're not able to leverage um, Knot of the Bone, or you're not able. You're not able to leverage a lot of like this. Like David's deck, coincidentally, also has a lot of other recursion factors to it. If you're delving all that stuff away, then what are you really recurring? Like David also has Tilling Tree Folk in his deck. So I think maybe there are builds that could run Gurmog Angler, uh, but this is the one we covered today. Is definitely not the list for it. Yeah. Um, I also, for what it's worth, I like Kroos and Tusker as a top end. Um, being able to tutor up lands early game and then get back a 6-5, like, <laughs> there aren't that many and decks out there playing Gurmag Angler right now, so a 6-5 is basically gigantic. 
and combos with Horror of the Broken Lands. It actually does. I I hadn't thought about it that way, but yes, it does combo with Horror of the Broken Land. Um, I have You're to welcome. go on a tangent here. I'm a little sad that Shafet Monitor, the new Cross and Tusker, was at Uncommon. Yeah, everyone is, Mike. Everyone. I know. It's probably just us, but <laughs> we'll pretend it's everyone. Um, Shafet Monitor, Monitor is just better, right? Because it, it goes to the battlefield and not to your hand. Costs but it costs more, more to, to cycle it. Yeah, so uh, it's, I think yeah, I think it's, it's really cool. a it's a six six and one half a dozen in another kind of situation where I don't know enough about math and magic to s- definitively say one is better than the other. I will say, yeah, Cross and Tusker has better art. Potato tomato, yeah, dude, big pig, big pig all the way. Yeah, yeah, foil, biggest great. pig, biggest pig in this format. Yeah, there's only room for one big pig. I think it is. I think it is legitimately the largest pig-like porcine animal in <laughs> in uh, our format. Um, I'm going to look it up. I, I don't think. I think boar is the creature type that you're looking for. I think brindle shoat and brindle boar are the only other boars that we have. Yeah, I'm sure bo- there's boar. Oh nope, there's blade tusk boar. How big is blade tusk boar? It's a it's a three two. It's not big. There's okay, not uh, not a big pig. D- Duskwood boar, a four four. Fester okay. hide boar, a three three. A three Prick, three that sometimes boar, a five five. Prickle boar, three three that sometimes a five three, and that's it. A lot of pigs. <laughs> okay. Uh, point being, besides you know delicious pork cards aside, I. I don't know. I have a hard time ever like saying definitively like this deck isn't good, but for a long time I kind of held that opinion of torture resistance and definitely, you know, seeing its return even in the form of just one five Oh and over, you know, months of talking with eight, six, eight, six, who is a huge proponent of the deck. I think there is something there. I just don't know if anyone will ever agree on what it is. All right. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, you have any other any other thoughts on this uh, this sort of? It's not really my style. I understand why people like to play it, though. Um, I have beat Tordex. I have been beaten by Tordex. I agree with you. I think it's a difficult deck to play. Is another factor about it. A difficult deck to build properly, and then also a difficult deck to play. Um, I wish we had gotten uh, eight six 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 on this episode because I would have loved to hear hear his thoughts, and um, maybe we'll get him on someday. But uh, we, we, we will. Don't worry. I'll, I'll manage to convince him to, you know, make time if we can make all the uh, the time zones line up correctly but, across this but country. Look, here's the thing. If, if a graveyard value deck interests you, pick up four copies of Tortured Existence. The deck can go a lot of places. The deck can be a lot of colors. It wouldn't surprise me if there's a mono black version somewhere out there just waiting to be discovered also. Um, so, look, so all, uh, all, all I'm going to say is how many times do you have to catch cast gray merchant of asphodel before it's just unbeatable? Like I think it's twice. (laughs) Okay. But my point being, I think, I think you might have some idea there. That's kind of cool. Lack of self mill is a bummer, but yeah, Well, no, no, there's, there's some self mill. Uh, what's that three, one zombie that mills when it's about those, you mill yourself. Ah, I don't know. You, you can you can it's called necromancer's assistant yeah dude there's totally a mono black tordex list out there just waiting to be uncovered i guess i guess there's also what is it corpse churn the the one in a black uh look uh, mill the top three return a creature from your graveyard to your hand that's my favorite metal song <laughs> corpse, corpse churn. Churn. yeah yeah that that that, it, that would have been a quality one to save for uh magic card or metal band um but in all in all seriousness I I'm glad that we got to do like a deep delve on an archetype that really at times doesn't feel like a coherent archetype. Like if you look at what is it? Uh, you are Delver. How much variance is there in those decks? Like maybe five, maybe, maybe 10 cards. Whereas, yeah. It's, it's, it's not too dreadfully much. Yeah. Versus, versus Tordex where, you know, the thing that unites Tordex decks is, four copies of Tordex and usually a number of stinkweed imps. And that's about it. 
Um, yeah. All right. Uh, we're, we're pulling up on an hour. Uh, we don't have a comedy outro bit this week. Um, just, you know, time constraints, wanting to really, you know, do right on a episode that someone, you know, basically paid us to make. Um, that said, you know, check out our, our Patreon if that's a thing that you would like to do. We definitely always accept uh, suggestions for the show, but if you pay us, we were, we're just kind of forced into it. We don't really get a choice there. If you pay us, we can't, we can't, we can't, we make this an offer we can't refuse. Yeah, exactly. It is definitely a very mob-like thing. But uh, Adrian, would you like to take us out of the show? Sure. Everybody, thank you for joining us today. This podcast is brought to you with the support of our patrons. Like you, David, please consider supporting us if you like the show. Check below this video or the description of this podcast for details on where to find us. We'd like to remind you that if you're listening to this on a platform with views, they're always appreciated as they boost our visibility. If you've got a deck list or an idea for a topic, feel free to contact us either via our website or by emailing us directly at colorcommentary at gmail.com. So, so thanks to Bats, Games, and L. Until next week, this is Adrian and Mike, and we're signing off for Color Commentary.